All right, welcome back. We didn't do one of these over the weekend, but I figure we should do one uh, to kind of start out the week. Now, this one is being uploaded relatively late. So a lot of you are probably going to access this video first thing Tuesday morning, which is cool. You know, you guys will be on your morning commute. You want to, you know, listen to a little something, something. Then this, uh, this is probably the video for you. All right. So I have 25 coins all pulled from eBay. Uh, and I will tell you this, a lot of new and different things compared to some of the previous pocket change reports that I've done. And uh, that is cool. Okay, that, that's what happens when the market is uh, on fire. Is it, You get quite an abundance of variety of different varieties and errors. Okay, which is, uh, which is what we want to see. We want to see a huge variety. And um, yeah, they're all being scooped up for some measurable amount of money. So if you guys are kind of wondering what a certain error or variety sells for, and you don't have to grade it, then this is your place. Okay, so we uh, take a look and pull about the last 24 to 36 hours of auction activity on eBay. I put it into a video for you of all of the relevant varieties and errors. And there might come a time where I'll throw one up here that kind of turned heads. Maybe you need to know whether or not it's a legitimate error or variety. We certainly talk about that here as well. Um, I anticipate as we go into the holidays to continue to see some pretty, uh, pretty nice errors and varieties uh, and the prices will just continue to hold strong on a lot of the material that you will see. Um, aside from that, there's really not a whole else lot that you need to know other than the coins that are highlighted in this video. Uh, however, the one last thing, it's always, always one of those caveats to this, every single coin uh, is raw. No, nothing's graded. Usually I don't put anything graded on here. The big idea is you could find these coins in your pocket change or through coin roll hunting activities you turn around take a couple really nice photos you throw them up on ebay you know as a buy it now listing or a traditional auction format and then you make however much you get from it uh simple as that it's the best way quickest way to uh liquidate the finds that you have all right so without further ado let's go ahead and start out with the first coin on the list starting with a 1979 Philadelphia Susan B. Anthony dollar coin. Now, this one right here uh, is a really cool error, and I can't believe that something like this is not slabbed by PCGS or NGC. But what we have here is a coin that is obviously missing the nickel-clad layer on the reverse of the coin. So what you, what you have here is a really nice coppery look on the reverse. Now, I will mention that there is some sort of like rim damage or something here, or it could be a cut. It's really hard to tell from this vantage point, but you can see a few digs here on this right side of the reverse. So that's the only reason why I think it's, it's probably a rim ding or something like that. But th this coin, ladies and gentlemen, has circulated a good bit. You could just tell. It's seen the, you know, it's seen a few cash registers and vending machines in its lifetime. So this one sold for $69.50, uh, keeping in mind that if it was encapsulated, it would probably be a $150 to $200 coin. It makes all the difference in the world to get your coin slabbed when appropriate. This is one of those times in which it is appropriate to do such a thing. All right, so the next one that we have here is another 1979 coin this time it's a roosevelt dime now um what we have here is a dime and you could obviously see on the reverse something's happening here uh, but this is a coin on uh, the obverse that you could barely tell that anything's wrong with it but in reality we have a defective planchet as a matter of fact it's a um, a fissure right here and it's probably a clamshell that's where the, uh, the, the the clad layers split apart and it looks like a clam's mouth literally um, and, but on the obverse of the coin you could see it uh, right here I believe 
that that's that's a little piece of the fissure right there. It's really hard to tell from the obverse, but on the reverse, you can see it really well. Uh, this one sold for $24, and that's what we got here. So that's a really nice coin, and these will pop up when you least expect it. All right, if you've ever come across one of these coins where you have a fully struck reverse, and then on the obverse, it looks blank, or you could maybe see a halo of Lincoln or something you know you can kind of make out the fact that it is a lincoln memorial set what we have here is a coin that's been struck through a later stage die cap so this is simply a coin that got stuck to the hammer die and it just sat there and it was striking every single subsequent coin with this cap sitting on the die and then you know a later stage means it's gone through many strikes it flattens out and this is what you get you actually get a very very subtle soft impression of what is on the die striking through the very thin cap at this point uh this thing is probably all bowled out and just kind of wrapped around the die it's it's funny how it works uh but this one right here sold for twenty dollars all right so that's what we got here all right so the next one that we have uh will fool a lot of people because typically you don't see these out there quite that often e even as um uh, an avid hunter of wheat scents i come across these very infrequently now this is a 1950 something it's a denver minted lincoln wheat scent but as you can see it looks like there's a bunch of uh like laminations or something on the reverse um, you know, to, to most untrained eyes, that's what it looks like. But what we have here is a coin that was split, all right? The planchet was split in half before the strike. And that, that really um, uh, corroborates a lot of the weakness on the obverse of the coin. But, you know, the, the split um, is on the reverse side, and that's what struck on there. So this is a coin that is much thinner than how it started out. You know, it's a coin that was just defective, or a planchet rather, and it split in half, and then one half of it got struck, and then this is what you're left with. Um, this is a pretty cool coin. Again, you don't see this on uh, US coins all that often. You do see them more on Canadian coins for whatever reason. I've come across a few Canadian um, uh, split before the strike type coins like this. Uh, but what did this one sell for? How about $35.50? That's a good chunk of money um, for something that a lot of people would just toss aside. And you can tell that this particular coin has been tossed aside a lot. Uh, <laughs> so if you know what you're looking for and you can identify one of these errors, this is a really good pull. All right, so keep that in mind as you're searching through your coin. Okay, so the next one we have here is neither an error or variety but these coins have been affectionately referred to as a poor man's double to die in the community normally we see them in the on the 1955 lincoln cents and the reason why that that particular date is more significant than any others in the 50s is because it also has a really amazing double to die obverse so People are looking for some sort of tie-in or parallel um, to that coin. So herein lies the poor man's double die, which is simply just a byproduct of die deterioration. Okay, you can see an extra three. That looks like it's doubled in there, but it only affects the last number in the date. And it's normally only seen on 1953, 1955, and then sometimes you will come across them on like 1956 and 1958s so anything with a rounded type of uh you know ball featured number you know out of those four you can certainly find die deterioration now here's a more better close-up of what that looks like now this will fool a lot of people all right but these these have been known and sold for many years if not decades as a poor man's double die okay people just don't really want the 1950 three as much as the 55 or the 56 or the 58 version of this coin uh but in any event this one sold for eight dollars and 24 cents shipped all right so for those of you out there this is again more of kind of like a mint state example 
it's going to take at least that grade level to be able to pull in the kind of money it did. Now, keep in mind, these also have shipping costs incorporated into every single quote I'm giving you on the sold prices. All right. So if you think you can't really see this all too well, let's say you have a microscope, that's okay. You don't need a high powered microscope to purchase something like this or to even see it rather, not so much purchase it. Um, but a good quality magnifier is key. It's, it's one of the, uh, coin collectors, uh, most important tools of the trade. If you guys need them, I have links amazon links in the description box below you're just gonna have to expand it out you know hit show more uh go ahead and check it out if you see anything you like i got some um, really nice quality ones at an affordable price if you're looking for a budget model we have them available for you uh go ahead and check it out but it's again if you're looking to get into varieties and errors that's a, a must-have tool all right, so the next coin that we have here is just simply a, you know, well-circulated 1979, another 79 Rosie in the same video. How does that work? Uh, but this one right here is about 10% off center struck. All right, so now pretty cut and dry on how this happens. Uh, but in any event, this one sold for $10.03. There you go. Uh, and, you know, again, keep an eye out for stuff like this. This one obviously came from circulation. You know, it's it's not mid-state anymore. It's more like an XF40, 45. All right. So, um, you know, it, it's still it's still money. Okay. Still worth it. All right. So I will say this. One of the things that I love doing is cherry picking just, you know, kind of like inexpensive cheap coins. Okay, I, I normally, if I were at a coin show, I would raid the five ten dollar bins to look for coins like this. So this is an 1868 three cent nickel. Okay, I one thing that you guys are gonna see right off the bat is it has a really large broken die cut right over here on the reverse of the coin. Um, normally on the older coins, they're not nearly as coveted. As a matter of fact, they're quite common. Uh, you could find these on the three cent nickels you could find them on the the shield nickels you could also find them on the indian head cents they're all over the place and especially from like the 60s 1860s 1870s you know is where you'll find them um, but this one right here this is a coin that generally you'll pay about 10 bucks for um at a you know coin show or maybe a local shop and uh you know dealer if they don't know any better of what they have you know, you could really, uh, uh, you know, make a little mini home run off of something like this. So this person right here sold it for $33.50. All right. So quite a bit of a premium over what the normal value is for a relatively common date three cent nickel. But it is also a really cool classic coin as well. All right, so I, I love errors like this. Uh, even though it's a modern date, 2001 Lincoln Memorial, I, I like errors that are uh, extremely high grade. Okay, so this is an obvious mid state red example that you see here. Um, the uh, the off center uh, spread is about 20, 25 percent. Um, and even with that kind of spread, you have a full date, which is cool. Okay. Then you know, it's a Philadelphia minted coin because you don't see the mint mark underneath it. Uh, but this one right here sold for $12 and 50 cents. Overall, it's just a great little, uh, error coin, a good statement piece for your collection. And if you were looking to put together a date set of off center errors, I mean, you could do a lot worse. I will say that this is just a really nice coin here. So I came across this one and um, I found it interesting, but at the same time, I'm not at all surprised. What have you guys heard me say about coinage of 2020? It is a virtual dumpster fire of a, a assortment of various errors. Here we go again. We have a 2020 Denver, that's right, Denver Salt River Bay quarter now it looks funny it looks like it has like a halo or some sort of like starburst kind of look to it and if you look even closer and i and i blew it up as much as i could for the video where you could see just the incredible dye flow lines 
uh, radiating not only on the obverse, but the reverse of the coin. Now, usually when something like this happens, okay, it's more dye deterioration. The dyes are on their way out. What do we know about 2020 coinage? Because of the alleged coin shortage, this has forced the U.S. Mint to crank out just ungodly numbers of coins to help offset whatever coin shortage there is. And because of that, they are certainly pushing aside quality control and they're just going all out with production. Okay, this is not the only coin on the list that I'm going to talk about in which, you know, errors come up as a result of this lapse in quality control. I'm telling you guys, it doesn't matter where you're at in the United States, if you're looking to pull some pretty cool coins, now is the time in these brand new 2020s. It is, um, it's like, it's like finding gold out there. I'll be honest. And, uh, you know, between the West Point coins and these coins and everything else that's going on right now. Okay. You, you could really, really enhance your collection in a big way, let alone make a few bucks in the process. Uh, but this coin here with extreme dye deterioration sold for $19.95. That's a $20 bill, you know, for, for just finding a coin that looks neat. And I'm willing to bet that there is probably a number of these um, in existence. Wherever this one was sold at or found at, you better believe that there's probably a ton more just like it. So, you know, that's easy, easy pickings. It's like shooting fish in a barrel, right? Okay, so the next one that we have here, um, yeah, it's, I mean, if you're looking right directly at Andrew Jackson, that thing is trippy all right but what we have here is a 20 dollars federal reserve note it's a 1950 c series and of course it's got that that printing void right down the middle okay that i love talking about these they are like kind of like the beginner's stage of error collecting in currency this is what is called a gutter fold okay so the way that this works is when these sheets are being printed this particular sheet had a little wrinkle in there okay so the wrinkle isn't apparent at first because again the bureau of engraving and printing is cranking out tons of sheets sheet after sheet after sheet and they're just making lots of 20s or fives or dollar bills or whatever uh, whatever the need arises uh say so they don't necessarily inspect every sheet to see if there's these wrinkles so when the sheet is printed over on that wrinkle. Okay, you can literally pull the wrinkle out and then you would have this gutter. Okay, and that's why it's called a gutter fold. And it would normally show up on both sides. On the reverse, you have the same thing. What I like about this one is that it splits the note right down the middle. These are typically much more desirable when it does this. Um, and it's a pretty wide gutter too. Uh, I've seen a lot of like skinnier gutter folds, but this one this one's a really neat one. Uh, so this one right here sold for $91.35, where typically any other gutter fold would sell for about half that. So that's a pretty neat example. All right, so what happens to coins at the mint, okay, if they don't quite pass the quality control or something happens, say, you know, a massive heart attack on one of the, uh, the minting presses? Well, They'll take the offending coinage and they will cancel them out, okay, by uh, a machine that does these unique patterns called waffling. Okay, this is what we have here. Now, this is a waffled uh, dollar planchet, okay? So it's either a, a you know, either a Sacagawea um, manganese alloy uh, coin or one of the presidential dollars. Okay, now this one right here is just a waffled coin. The the part uh, that I think would appeal to a lot of people is if you're still able to see some of the host design on there, this one doesn't have it. All right, so this one is just a waffled canceled out coin with no uh, discernible uh, design features on there, I guess. Uh, but this one right here sold for $19.95 which is a going rate for stuff like this. You know, they could get a little bit cheaper if you, you know, buy a Lincoln cent canceled or a Roosevelt dime is probably one of the more cheapest um, coins to get with the waffling design. All right, so for everyone that has 
taken a look at this coin, have actually held it in their hand, and then decide to just go ahead and spend it because it looks like it's damaged, shame on you. <laughs> uh, this is one that, that trips up a lot of people. Now, take a look at the reverse. It, it looks virtually perfect. You can barely tell anything's going on with this. But on the obverse of the coin, you have a pretty sizable indent. And you also have the word one mirrored in reverse, um, you know, that, that you would normally see on the reverse design of the coin. Okay, what this is called is a, uh, a brockage. Okay, so this one has an indent with a brockage on there. Uh, pretty cool looking coin. Uh, again, this is something that... You know, pops up when you least expect it. Okay, obviously this coin right here has spent a good deal of time, okay, changing hands. You know, hey, here's your coffee. Oh, yeah, here's some change. And then the world just keeps turning. This one right here sold for $84.27. I can't stress this enough. If it looks funny, just pull it aside. It's only a penny, guys. Do not spend these things unless you're really, really hard up for something that's worth a penny. They don't make gumball machines that take pennies anymore. At least I don't think so. Um, so, you know, this, man, this is such a home run, you know, turning one cent into um, 8,427 times face value. It seems kind of ridiculous in hindsight. All right, so we got a dollar bill, this time a 1995 series. A little bit older, but these still exist out there. And, yeah, there's nothing going on on the front of the note. But if you flipped it around to the back, you have this going on. And what we have here is what's called a wet ink offset transfer. Okay, so it's a front-to-back transfer of the, uh, the design, um, which is pretty cool, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you come across these ever so often along with the gutter folds. Uh, these are some of the more common errors that can be found. And they're even found on newer notes. So keep that in mind. Uh, this one right here sold for $58.95. All right. So that's a pretty respectable amount of money. And the, the, the dollar bill has obviously been circulated. I mean, it just looks the part. It's not a crisp, crispy, uncirculated example. This one has been folded a few times and then put into your wallet or her wallet, or what have you. Okay, so we got 1961 Denver Lincoln Memorial set. Uh, I love this date. There's just a lot to find on here in terms of the varieties, okay? Uh, Repunch mint marks, always a big thing with this date. Um, up close, this is Repunched Mint Mark number 23. And this one is a D over D over D. Now, uh, the... Third D, you can't really tell it's uh, that's on there, but you can certainly see this one right here, uh, punched slightly east of the primary mint mark. Um, me personally, I think it's a D over D, but there is a third D in there somewhere. Uh, I think it's just maybe a split serif or whatever, like a tilted uh, repunch mint mark. But this one right here sold for nineteen dollars and eighty cents. People do collect these, and you know they're worth money. That's for sure. All right, so this one I'm going to need your guys' opinion on. Okay, so this note right here was being sold as a um, an ink smear note. All right, there's there's some things that, that's casting a lot of doubt in my mind if this is a genuine solvent smear note. Okay, uh, the note has seen a good deal of circulation. Okay, and then just uh, maybe this void right here. I don't know what this is, but um, the green... The green ink or the solvent or whatever. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's just, it, it, there's certain things that's just weird about this note. Um, but, you know, and here's the reverse. You know, you, you can see the, uh, the the fade through of the ink, even on the reverse. Uh, this one right here sold for $42. So the, this one is a tricky one. If you're going to get into currency collecting, you got to know what kind of errors are legit. Um, a solvent smear. Is obviously a real error, but you know, for a note of this age and this this circulation wear, uh, it's kind of tricky. You have to be careful. Uh, this one, I'm kind of on the air if it's a legitimate uh, overinking smear, uh, but I don't know. We'll see. I, I wish the buyer the best. Hopefully, it's the real deal. 
All right, so this is <laughs> this one is actually funny. Uh, it's a 1945 Lincoln Wheat Scent. However, um, that full obverse photo on the left side there, it's quite out of focus and quite bad. I'll be honest with you. But the reverse image, this guy knocked it out of the park. Like, this guy's been photographing close-up images of coins for quite some time, and he gets it right every time. So I don't know what the deal is here, but... Um, yeah, this is a uh, reverse cud. Okay, so a piece of the die had fallen off after many strikes. Uh, you know, dies are subjected to wear and tear, much like the actual uh, coin presses that uh, hold the dies in place. So, you know, this one's just an overall neat coin. Keep an eye out for these cuts. This one sold for $29. So even in this condition, they're still worth quite a bit of money. All right, so here's that other 2020 Salt River Bay quarter I was talking about. I've talked about this one. As a matter of fact, I talked about it in a video a few days ago. Uh, this is a Philadelphia struck coin. Of course, you're going to find a lot of errors coming from the Philadelphia Mint. Uh, this one right here, however, has, you see these the, the rain showers in the background? Uh, these are actually feeder finger scrapes. So the feeder finger, you know, seats the coin or pushes the coin into the striking chamber uh, so yeah it, it's tapped the die one too many times and it's created these perfectly parallel marks on the fields uh, of the coin uh, so when the coin is struck you'll see them every single time um, that these set of dies are used on there uh, but again here's another error this one right here is sold for nine dollars and twenty cents uh, the Feeder Finger, Salt River Bay, uh, there's quite a few of them out there. It's not rare as it once was. Uh, these things sold for like 30, 40 bucks at one point. Uh, so the prices have come down, but they're still worth a few shekels. So this is kind of like the monster of clips. When you can find a clip that looks like a crescent moon, you know, I think you've done pretty well. Now this, <laughs> ironically, just judging from the actual circulation wear on this coin, this thing has passed through many hands. Okay, but what's also equally interesting is that it is also a double clip. It's also got a second clip right here, guys. Um, and, you know, to, to see one large clip and a tiny clip on one coin, uh, you don't see it that often. But it's really cool when you do. Uh, this particular coin right here, even though it has no readable date, uh, sold for a best offer of $22.24. All right, there you go. Uh, here's another clip, this time on a 1984 Philadelphia Washington Quarter. Um, I mean, check out the grade. It's not the greatest. This thing is used and abused, uh, like I always say. Uh, this one, $12.48 later, uh, is a pretty good sale. All right, so, you know, this is a very common error to find. And oftentimes, you'll be able to sell them for 5 10 15 20 bucks a pop. Uh, the more clips, the merrier. That's where you get all your money. All right, so someone sold this note, okay, uh, for what I... I think it's for the wrong reason. And because of that, uh, this particular seller didn't get all the money that they could have from this note. The note is a really nice, crisp dollar bill. It's a 1999 series, so it's a little bit older. But this note right here was being pitched as being a low digit or a turned serial number. Unbeknownst to the actual seller that it's a low serial number. Okay, five leading zeros and then seven, five, two. That's a low serial number. This is a note in high grades that typically sells for like 30, 40 bucks. Uh, but because the note was being pitched as a uh, low serial, which by the way, is a very negligible error on paper currency because you see them all the time. This is within tolerances. This one right here sold for $18.90. What a bummer. Uh, could, yeah, could have made a lot more money um, if the focus was put on the actual serial, the fancy serial number on this one. But, you know, what can you do? Uh, it's, it's not like, you know, it sold for 10 bucks when in reality it could be a $5,000 dollar bill. Um, <laughs> that'd be a different story. I mean, we are, we are talking about a $10 difference. Uh, but there you go. Uh, that's a low serial number dollar bill. Very collectible. 
All right, so the usage of props photographing your coins is pretty important, especially when it comes to retained lamination pieces still on the coin. How cool is that? A little piece of paper with a cute little arrow uh, designates exactly what you're, you know, what's drawing your eyes to this coin. Okay, and that's smart. If you're able to do stuff like this, that is fantastic. And you know, there's a secondary image where you can actually see that little lamination flap just raised and hanging in there, you know, trying to figure out who's peeking underneath that flap right there. It could be anybody's guess. Uh, but this one right here, 1957D Lincoln Wheat with the retained lamination, sold for a best offer of $32.97. Incredible stuff. That's a lot of money for a coin that obviously has been circulating a little bit. It's a nice grade, don't get me wrong. Uh, but yeah, you can imagine how many hands this has passed through. All right, nothing like a good old 1979 Washington Quarter. Yeah, we got a few 1979 coins on the list. Kind of crazy. Uh, but what we have here is an uncentered broad struck example. All right, so pretty simple. Uh, yeah, this is both the same coin. He's holding it in his hand while wearing some of these cotton gloves. And then he has it in some sort of two-by-two -two flip here with a red background. So, yeah, it's the same image, same coin. Uh, this one right here is sold for $13.24 here in the last day. Now, this is what I'm talking about. If you're able to find a waffled, canceled coin, and it has this kind of detail still left on there, I, I'd say that's pretty good. A 2016, and yes, a Denver. You can actually read the mint mark on there. Jefferson Nickel, uh, waffle canceled, and... Because it shows detail, here's the difference. The other coin I showed you sold for 20 bucks. This one sold for $30.24. And it's a common denominator. It's a, it's a nickel. It's not a dollar coin. Imagine if that presidential dollar coin had an actual readable kind of like motto or something on there. You knew exactly which president it was. Uh, that's a game changer. That probably could have been a $100 coin, but... In essence, here you go. This is an attractive, canceled error type thing. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm telling you. Yeah, we're in 2020, but it doesn't hurt to, you know, kind of turn back the clock to 2019. I think we could all use a little turning back the clock. Um, th this is a coin right here that I own. I own one of these. Another one that sold on eBay uh, in the last 24 hours. 2019. WDDO number 11, okay, or DDO number one. Uh, so in Wexler's, it's number 11. Uh, but this is a really, really cool double to die offers. Um, the date, obviously, you know, it's all stretched out. You know, it, it, this is this is a strong one. Uh, and it's still available out there, guys. Okay, there are 2019s in mid state, east of the Mississippi. If you're all up and down the east coast, make sure. You continue to look for these. These are like a $20 bill every time you find it because they are popular. They sell every time. Here's Liberty. Even Liberty is all kind of, you know, stretched out. You know, thickness of the, the letters are really, really, really neat. Double to die offers. But you know what's really neat? Okay, we got one coin left. We're going all old school on this one. This is just a really nice graded 1855 Seated Liberty Quarter. Uh, on the reverse, you have a lamination. <laughs> now, customarily, these older coins aren't nearly as coveted with kind of like the errors that people want to see today. Laminations, clips, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's like it diminishes the actual value of the coin because they have those defects, those planchet flaws on there, uh, or strikethroughs. Strikethroughs is another thing that people don't want on their old classic coinage, especially in this condition. This is like a VF 30, 35. Um, you know, it's just, <laughs> it, it, it detracts a lot of attention to the coin when it has something like that. And especially for the old school folks, that like the old classic coins like this, uh, it could really be a downer. But in this case, it's actually quite appealing to it. And that's probably why it sold for $81.95.
Uh, just an overall really nice example. It would look good in a typeset, even with the lamination or planchet fly on the reverse. Uh, but there you go. That's what I wanted to end it on because that coin is sweet. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to do it. Pocket Change Market Report is out for the night. I want to thank you guys for watching. And oh, yes, if you haven't checked it out, I got some new merchandise. Uh, some t shirts with the Blue Ridge Soul Round logo. I got two different variants. We got coffee mugs. We got, you know, uh, iPhone cases and all that great stuff. Even the little gator face mask. Uh, that seems to be the fashionable thing. You know, why not get one with my uh, my logo on it, if he's so inclined. Uh, but anyways, that's going to go ahead and do it. Oh yeah, the merchandise is down below the video. Uh, you can see the, the scroll along uh, of all the different types of product available. But enough about that. I want to thank you guys for hanging tough 35 minutes through this video, checking out all the great stuff that is sold on eBay. Keep that in mind. If you could take pretty good pictures of your coins and you could probably make a buck or two or more by selling your finds. I want to thank you guys for joining. I'm your host Sean with Blue Root Silver Hound. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, Coinaholics, we are discovering together. You guys take care. Enjoy the hunt and I'll see you on the next video.